this was me shopping for my MacBook before the whole AI local model craze took over this year. Customize memory 64 gigabytes, storage two terabytes. That should be enough. And now, just over a year later, this is what my drive looks like. 47 gigabytes left out of two terabytes. And yes, of course, I have to have a lot of storage for video content like this, but I offload that to usually things like this. But the biggest surprise of the year was the amount of space we need for AI models. This is my AI folder. I know, I know. I called it AI folder. I'm probably gonna have to rename it at some point to something more meaningful. But inside of that, I have uh, a lot of these projects, these local LLMs. For example, here's Code Llama. This one has a lot of different varieties of the model. 7 billion parameters, 7 billion instruct, 7 billion Python, 13 billion, 34 billion, 70 billion. And each one of these is huge. This 70 billion parameter model is 137 gigabytes. This whole Code Llama folder is 362 gigabytes. And when I did have, it doesn't fit right now, but when I did have the 70 billion parameter Python model here, this is over five. 500 gigabytes. That's a quarter of my drive for just this one project, Code Llama. Now these are the raw models. On top of that, when I run it on my machine, this is the M2 Max MacBook Pro, I need to quantize it down. This right here is the 70 billion parameter model quantized and it's 38 gigabytes. But guess what? Just because you quantized it down doesn't mean the original file goes away. So when you're quantizing, you have to have space for the original model and the new model. It just accumulates and accumulates, especially if you are trying to find something for your specific use case. You're gonna be going through a lot of these and they all take up a ton of space. And that's one of the reasons why I got this. Oops. This is just a direct attached storage, DAS, some of you might know it as. But I'm a software engineer and content creator for YouTube, so here's how I use this. This is TerraMaster's new D8 hybrid, and the hybrid part means, oh, by the way, not a sponsored video. The hybrid part means that there's SSDs in here, M.2 drives, and there's regular hard drives in here. So I loaded this thing up. There's four eight terabyte Seagate Iron Wolf Pros in here. These two are set up as RAID 1, 16 terabytes total. But when you set it up in RAID 1, which means there's protection, you only get eight terabytes out of that. So if one of these drives fails, I can still recover all the data. So that's my cold storage for things like old files, video backups, and things like that. These two I'm not using yet. That's just 16 terabytes of extra space that I have for other things later on. But the SSDs, the M.2 drives, this is the stuff that I use for my software development stuff, like storing models here. There's four M.2 one terabyte chips that I've set up in here in a RAID 0 configuration. And RAID 0 means uh, I'm playing with fire but it's gonna be fast and that's what I want. I want speed, not necessarily reliability here because these are things that I store on here that I can always restore later if something happens. So for example, these models, I can always re-download them, but I don't wanna download them each time I need them. And I'm gonna show you how I use that with Olama for my AI workflows. I wish this was a Thunderbolt connection, but it's not. It's USB 3.2, but you don't need more than that because the fastest drive in there is gonna be uh, a gig. The hard drives, the cold storage is gonna be a little bit slower. It's gonna be like 200 megabytes per second, something like that. But I don't need that to be fast. That's just for cold storage. The hot storage, that's the SSDs, they need to be super fast. And that's why I have those in there. I plug this in with one single cable and power, of course. I have all these drives that show up. These loose eight terabyte HDDs, the hard drives that pop up. And then this one. Now this one is the RAID configuration that I set up for drives one and two, the hard drives. And I've configured time machine for that. Now I have an eight terabyte time machine instead of my old one. I'll make a separate video on my old time machine let me know in the comments if you want to see that. That's for backups of the system. And this right here is the RAID SSD. So that's four drives all combined into one virtual drive. It's not nearly as fast as the internal drive on the MacBook Pro, but it doesn't need to be. I'm getting a thousand megabytes a second on there and almost 900 in read. And this is where I have my code, my virtual machines. Here's my Windows 11 machine. I typically have that on there, but for some reason I deleted it. That one is 140 gigabytes by itself. And that could save me some space if I run it right off the drive. I'm gonna do a quick comparison here in this video, running it off of the SSD internally and running it off of this thing. And as you can see, 139 gigabytes is gonna take about two minutes, just over two minutes to copy. I just got this thing and I filled it up. But the one thing that I'm starting to notice is 
it makes a lot of noise sitting right next to me on the desk. I think I have a solution for that and I'm gonna share that with you on this channel. Now let's get to the fun part. I recently did a video here on Olama. I'll link to it down below if you wanna see that. If you missed it, check that out if you wanna get set up with it. But when you run Olama models, when you pull Olama models, it pulls them to a default location, but you can change that. On the terminal, I have Olama. I wanna make sure that when it pulls models in, that it pulls them into my DAS and not the default location. So how do you do that? You need to set an environmental variable. Launch CTL, launch control, set env olama models. Here on my RAID, my SSD RAID, I'm gonna create a new folder called olama models. And that's the folder I wanna use. I'm just gonna drag this right into the terminal, bam. Notice it says volumes, TDAS, and that's the name of my uh, RAID array there. That's the SSD array and then the folder, olama models. If this gets disconnected, olama is not gonna work. So make sure it's always connected. Enter. Boom. Now when I say Olama, pull Olama 3, notice this folder right now is empty, but if I say pull Olama 3, it's going to download the Llama 3 model to run with Olama. And of course, I need to quit Olama and restart it so it reads that new environmental variable. Restart Olama, allow, and there it is. It created the blobs folder by itself. And now if I say pull Llama 3, it's going to download that 4.7 gigabyte file, which is the uh, Llama 3 model. And it comes in all these different files. You don't need to worry about that. Just leave that folder alone. It'll manage itself. Uh, in that other video, I show you how to download other models if you need them as well. This takes a couple of minutes to do, depending on your internet speed, and it's done. So now I can just say Olama run Llama 3, and I can say hi to my new LLM. Hi, nice to meet you. Is that something I can help you with? Or would you like to chat? And the model is running directly from my SSDs in the Terramaster DAS. Each time I run it, it gets loaded into memory. So let's say I wanted to write a um, 1000 word essay that gets loaded up into memory. Notice I have memory used 32 gigabytes now, still zero swap used. And it's writing the message right now, writing the essay. And we can take a look at the GPU history and it's using the GPU of the machine because Olama is by default configured to use the Apple Silicon GPUs that's included. Now, what about my virtual machines? So I run Windows on a Mac using Parallels and I have several videos about that as well. This is my virtual machine that's stored on the actual MacBook Pro internal SSD, which is really fast. Now I can issue a command called winset disk dash drive C and this will tell me the speed of the drive. The sequential read is 5,500 megabytes per second or five gigabytes per second. And the rate is 3.3 gigabytes per second. Very fast. Random is 920, still very fast. I'm gonna start up Visual Studio here and I'm gonna run a project just to see how fast does it run on my internal versus how fast does it run on the SSD and whether that has any effect on it. I have this project called Mandelbrot C Sharp and I'm just gonna build this in release mode. Let's go over here, CD bin, release, net seven, and I believe that has my executable. Yes, it does. So in PowerShell, we use measure command, commandlet, to measure the time that it takes for a command to execute. And I'm gonna execute the .exe that was built in release mode. I'm gonna give it my usual flag of 16,000. If you haven't seen videos on this channel, don't worry about it. This is a standardized test that I use on this channel. It's available on the Benchmarks Game uh, website. All right, let's run this. Not the best test right now because I have a ton of other stuff running, but it's gonna be consistent with comparing it to how it runs from the DAS. And it's done, it took 49 and a half seconds to run. I'm gonna go back to my DAS and open up uh, this Windows file. When you make a copy of the PVM file, which is the Parallels Virtual Machine, it's detecting that there's a duplicate MAC address. So I'm gonna click on Create New to create a new MAC address. So these machines are seen as two different machines. And it detects that you're running this from a connected device. So it gives you this warning. While Windows 11 is running, do not disconnect the volume with its files from your Mac, otherwise you might run into issues. Pretty clear. Uh, if you disconnect the drive while running Windows, you're gonna have issues. I'm gonna do our Winset Disk Drive C test to get the speeds. The write speed is actually almost the same. The read speed is a bit slower and the random read is about half. Let's do that again. Yeah, so it is a bit slower, quite a bit slower than running it from the internal SSDs, but you're getting the benefit of keeping that away from your machine and taking up a lot of space. So you can have a ton of different virtual machines running off of the DAS. 
Now let's do our Visual Studio Matterbrot test. Build for release, measure command, 16,000, boom. By the way, Matterbrot test is uh, using all the CPU cores available to that machine. It's not a memory bound test, it is a CPU bound test, multi-threaded test. And we're getting 49 seconds here as well. Of course, it's gonna depend on what kind of workload you're running, whether you're gonna be bound by the connection, by the, uh, in this case, USB connection, because that's gonna be the slowest connection, not the drive speed or maybe uh, you're bound by memory if i were to run the 70 billion parameter model straight up it just probably wouldn't work on this machine at all because it's 134 gigabytes and that needs to fit into memory this is a 64 gig machine so it's not going to work i would need to quantize that down but i could probably run the 34 billion parameter model in fact yes i could run it directly on this machine and that's a memory bound operation so it doesn't matter if the models live on an external DAS and thanks to the members for supporting the channel there is a join button right down below I make extra videos for the members only but it's not necessary I post a lot of videos here as well for everybody just subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this and if you want to see my Olama with web UI video right over here thanks for watching I'll see you next time